Hi there, my name is Vic Vier, and if you've been following my channel over the last few weeks, you'll know that I've done some videos on the implants for obstructive sleep apnea, the Inspire implant and also the Genio implant. And both of these now are available on the NHS. They help people with snoring and sleep apnea. But in this video, I want to tell you about something completely new, a new implant for obstructive sleep apnea people. It's not yet available, but I want to tell you about the future of this technology. I'm really excited about this new implant. It's, so I've been doing some research and helping with the design, doing some studies, clinical trials, things like that for this company for a few years now. And some of my patients have been involved and thank you very much for not telling anyone about it. But what we're doing is a brand new way of helping people with obstructive sleep apnea. And the reason that it came about is that, well, Inspire, Genio, they all focus on the hypoglossal nerve, which makes sense because that's the one that pulls your tongue forward. But there are all sorts of different types of nerves in your throat that can cause problems. And there are loads of muscles in your throat that actually, if this muscle keeps falling back, we, if we could only just bring it forward, there's all sorts of things out there that cause a problem. Because if you've seen my videos on drug-induced sleep endoscopy, this is a um, technique where I get people to lie down in the bed, give them a bit of sedation so they fall asleep and start snoring away in front of me. So I can see when I look at down the back of their throat whilst they're sleeping in front of me in the hospital, which parts of their throat are collapsing, which parts of their throats are vibrating, so I know where the problem's coming from. Anyway, because I've got that data, I can now say, well, if only we had an implant for this thing here, or this muscle there, or this nerve here. And what we've been doing with this company is trying to solve that problem. Rather than just focusing on one nerve, or, or even both nerves on the same side, what we're trying to do with this implant is target multiple nerves multiple muscles, the ones that we really need for individual patients. So it's really exciting. It means we've got a lot more control, a lot more ability to help the person in front of us rather than trying to get a one size fits all sort of thing. Now, it's not yet available for uh, patients or commercial use. It's only for research at the moment. And so we've come a long way. I've helped out with the design, trying to work out what anchors to use and how thick it should be, what the approach should be, all that sort of stuff. We've got to the point where we're actually studying it on patients on the NHS. So uh, I think it's me, Australia, and so I'm doing the European side. There's the Australians and there's I think there's the Americans as well. So the three of us get together from time to time. I think it was Australia last time we did a, I did a Zoom meeting. I didn't fly over there. And we talked about the design and what we can do to change and fix the problem that we're having with implants at the moment. And so... This device is great in the sense that what it does is put tiny little implants into the areas which we think we need. So, for example, if we thought the tongue needed to come forward, we'd put a tiny little implant next to the nerve here and then another one next to the nerve here. So you actually implant these little sort of pea-sized, long pea-sized things. I'll put a little uh, picture down here in a minute as well. And then, actually, what about doing anticervicalis? What about doing some of the muscles in your tongue rather than just the nerves? We could do individual muscles one by one. So you put these little tiny little pellets all around the neck where we think it would be most effective. And the advantage of that is that, A, we can individualize the treatment for each person. So if you've had, say, six implants put in, we know that we need to do a little bit more on the right compared to the left, all that sort of thing. We can with the computer work out how much it needs to be increased on each side. That's really useful because a, as I said, you can pick out the areas that you need. But B, instead of one nerve pulling one muscle forward, you can do lots of muscles and just a little bit of stimulation every. So you open up in a more gradual uh, sort of palm way of opening up the airway. So you don't have to put so much stimulation into one muscle or one nerve. You can utilize all of them at a very low stimulation level. So it's not waking you up as often, I think, as well. The other thing, which I haven't told you about, uh, which I think is really exciting, is that what we're going to do is not have this put in during an operation. You don't actually have to be asleep to implant these little devices. So the hard bit is finding where these nerves are. And, and so kindly, uh, the company sent me to uh, Belgium, Brussels, some, somewhere, and they got me to learn how to use an ultrasound machine. 
And so the idea is that I, I'm taught to look at uh, these nerves, which, you know, ENT surgeons don't often use an ultrasound machine unless you've done some head and neck surgery and things like that. And I was, I did head and neck a long time ago. So I had to relearn all of this. So using an ultrasound machine, I could find with a bit of jelly, a bit like the baby scans, those sorts of jellies. I could find the nerve and then I can implant the little little pea size uh, implant in the right area and then do it on the other side and the other side and the other side until I've got all the areas I need it for. And then I can power them one at a time so I can check that it's doing the right thing whilst someone is either asleep in front of me or while they're awake in front of me. And then once I've got everything set, I can then use that information later. So you can do this without an operation. You can do it in like one of those chairs, the clinic chairs, and that that way people don't have to come in, have a big operation, and then go stay and stay overnight on the ward and things like that. It can all be done in a clinic. It's all really exciting. You could tell I'm really excited. <laughs> um, I should say that uh, I, I don't get paid by Genio, Inspire, or Invicta. I have not had any money from any of these people. So what I'm saying to you is uh, completely my own opinion, and I hope that you uh, – uh, understand that this is not coming from some commercial background. Anyway, so back to this device. Uh, there's a little picture around here for you. So what I think we're trying to do is instead of having little spots everywhere and powering everything with like a like a polar neck you have to wear all the time, I think it might have a little tail. You can see that little tail there. And so they all point to one area. So you can just power, put a little charger on one area. Uh, we're thinking about some like a pajama top or something that you have to wear or, or maybe a, a soft collar or something like a little band. I don't know what they've got in store for us yet because I didn't get told everything about this implant. It's not me designing it by myself. It's hundreds of people around uh, the world, America, Australia. So we're trying to figure it out one by one. It's really exciting being involved in the sort of the des design phase. And now we're on to the clinical trial phase. We're actually trying on people. The trials that I did uh, in the European side of things was that we wanted to prove that these little things work. So we what we did was we brought people in, did a drug-induced sleep endoscopy where we watch people sleep and see where the problem is at the back of their throat. And then we put a little wire next to these nerves individually and turn them on and off and sometimes in combination to see what effect it would have to the inside of their throat. We also saw how much air they could breathe. So the way we did that trial was that we had a mask on their face, so a CPAP mask. And when we turned on the machine, we noticed that it was much easier to get air in and out. So that was a, um, a relatively objective way of proving that the airflow was better rather than having to, the CPAP having to push so hard. And also we looked down there at the same time so we could see the throat opening up so you can see, ah, well, that's really is working for that area there. A lot of what we've been doing, or what I've been doing anyway, is going to labs, trying to work out what's the best way of putting these implants in without damaging other structures. Because you can imagine the neck is a complicated area. You've got your brain up here and the rest of the body there. This is sort of like a bottleneck. There's a lot of circuitry going up and down. So you don't want to damage something on the way. And so we had to work out a way with the ultrasound that we, as we pass this implant into these nerves, into these muscles, that we're not damaging something on the way. So working all of that out was really difficult, but finally, I think we've worked it out. Uh, obviously, we're going to finesse the, the, you know, the technique and things we're going to learn along as we go along the way, but we're doing everything really nicely and the results have been really good so far. So hopefully with time, I can show you some of these results uh, as, a, as a sort of a whole. And I think I said in one of my videos, look, uh, I know which nerves help the epiglottis. I know which nerves help the tongue, uh, the lateral, all those sorts of things. We're gaining all that information using these little pellets because they can individually affect different parts of your throat. Um, it does mean that there are a few different areas in the throat that we'll be operating on. But they're, as I said, like a needle in each part. And you can do it while you're awake. If you really need to be asleep, you can do it while you're asleep, I guess. But all of that sort of detail is coming through. What we're trying to do now is proving to everyone that it works. It's a viable option. And, you know, honestly, I'm really excited. That's really, this is, this is just what we need. Something customizable for each patient because not every patient's got the same problem. And this will give us a whole area of control because some people, for example, if, if I had implants now, but then I gained loads of weight, maybe the problem in my throat may change. 
it'd be really great not to have a whole new operation to deal with that. You just turn up the stimulation in some areas and not some other areas, depending what we can see inside the throat. So there's all sorts of things that we can get. And also with this information, you can try and you can get more, you can get more sort of data about how people breathe, what happens to people's throats when uh, they're in dream sleep. And there's so much cool research and great new information we can get from this. Um, anyway, look, I'll start blabbering on about this. Once I get some uh, sort of study data, I can share that with you and I'll put it in my um, my podcast and also in my newsletter if you want to look at that. But thank you very much for watching this. Do take care. Bye-bye.